Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vrinda Today's story is from the Antilila chapter 4 and the title we've given this short story is the a golden body arises from sores and the introduction to this story this story involves Sanatana Goswami and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu after some time Lord Chaitanya, we heard about Lord Chaitanya coming to Siddhabokul and meeting Haridas Thakur and Sanatana Goswami. And Sanatana Goswami was revealing his mind to Lord Chaitanya that he felt very unhappy and sad and he felt very... Sanatana was feeling he was committing the greatest offense by allowing Lord Chaitanya to embrace him. Lord Chaitanya insisted on re repeatedly embracing him lovingly and tightly even though Sanatana's body was covered with sores, open wounds and sores all over his body, which were excreting and oozing pus and blood. So it would contaminate, first of all, these are contaminating substances. So they would cont Lord Chaitanya just bathed in the ocean and he would come to Siddhabokul and his body would now become contaminated. And after that embrace, he would have to go take a bath again in order to do, chant his mantras or to do his pujas or whatever, or, or to go see Lord Jagannath, he would have to take a bath and change his clothes. And knowing all that, Sanatana Goswami was in great distress, feeling that it was great aparad. So he, at another time, he met Lord Chaitanya, and his body was still in this situation. And at that time, Lord Chaitanya, <clears throat> when he was, had this dialogue with Sanatana, this is verse 172, he said, Tomara Dehatumi, Kara Vibhatsagyan, Tomara Deya Amare Lagi Amrita Saman. He says, you, you think your body's bibatsa and this rasa tattva, the combination of five different mellows, or rasas, which make, produce this taste, this ras, there's five bhavas, or the ratis. So one rati is the, uh, the gona ratis, the stai rati and the gona rati. So the gona ratis, one of them is bibatsa, bibatsa, jagupsita, some sometimes called Jagupsita or Vibhatsa. There's Hasya Ras and there's Vira Ras. These are the secondary Rasas. There's seven, five primary Rasas and seven secondary Rasas. They're called Gona Ras and Mukhi Ras of the, uh, within the, uh, these are supplements. The seven Gona Rasas are supplements of the Stairati, like in Madhurya, like say, Conjugal love is a stairati, madurati. Then there's these seven subsequent parts of that. So when Krishna entered the wrestling arena, Kamsa, then different people saw him in different ways. Some people experienced vira ras and some vibhatsa ras and some uh, adbhuta ras, amazement and different rasas. So here, Sanan Goswami, Gauranga Mahaprabhu is saying, your body is vibhatsa. It's horrible. It's, it's horrible. It's abominable. It's horrible. It's bibatsa. You're saying that. It is like, factually, realistically, your body, your physical body is like that. But what do I think? Amrita Sama. Amrita Sama. I think your body's like nectar. I don't think it's disgusting or horrible at all. I think it's nectar. And then he explains what is his vision, what is his vichar, what is he, how is he, how is he saying this? Bodies oozing, stinking, stinking, 
Pus. Pus is very smelly. Dead skin cells, white pus and blood. It's smelling, it's sticky, it's oozing. Most abominable and ghastly thing. And it's all stuck on Lord Chaitanya's golden chest and arms. And, he's, and what is Lord Chaitanya's comment, his philosophical viewpoint? He says, Aprakrita deha tomara, prakrita kabunai, tarapi tamara tate, prakrita buddhi hai, sanatan. Your body is a prakrita, a prakrita. Actually, your body is transcendental. It is not prakriti, it is aprakriti, a prakrita. A prakrita deha tamara. Prakriti kabunai. Your body is not material. You are you you are thinking of your body in terms of a material conception. Prakriti buddhi. Your buddhi, your intelligence, your conception is material, but the fact is different. You may think one thing, but the fact is another thing. This is often the case in this world of misconception. We're living in this world of misconception. The, this is one of the defects of the conditioned souls. Brahm, Pramad, Vipralipsa, these four defects are there. So this Brahm, this is misconception, illusion. We're seeing one thing, we're th thinking something else. One thing is reality and we think something else. So he's, from the viewpoint or intelligence or idea of Sanatana Goswami, he's saying, my body's abominable. And he's saying, no, you're, you're initiated, you've taken Vaishnav Diksha. Your body is transcendental, it's a Prakrita Deha. There's no more karma for you, everything is seva. Karma is for non-devotees, seva. If you're not initiated, it's karma. If you're initiated, it's seva. If you're not initiated, it's, it's your karma fall. If you're initiated, it's Krishna's itcha. Vishnu Chakravarti and others explain this in Bhagavad commentaries in 10th Canto and all many other places. So there's karma, there's seva, there's Krishna's mercy and will, and there's our own, our own prabda, prabda, kutam and vijam karmas that are causing our sup and dup. Our happiness and distress are caused by us, if we're a karmi. If we're a devotee and taking diksha, our happiness and distress are caused by Krishna. It's his will. So he's saying this, he says, you're a prakrita deya tomara. Your body is transcendental. Verse 191. Then he goes on, Mahaprabhu. Prabhu kaha, Prabhu kahe Vaishnav dehe, Prakrita kabunai, Aprakrita deya bhaktera chirananda moi. Mahaprabhu explains to Snatan Goswami in this Upadesh and Antilila, and he's explaining the tattva. He's explaining Guru Tattva, he's explain, explaining Bhagavad Tattva, and he's explaining the Jiva Tattva in a few verses, because he's God, he's, he's a personification of eloquence. Krishna's Kaviraj defines eloquence as essential truth spoken concisely. Eloquence, eloquence, essential truth spoken concisely. So he's saying, you're a Vaishnava. Prabhukahe, Mahavru said, Sanatan, listen Sanatan, and listen anyone and everyone. Do you have Guru? Have you taken Diksha? Are you taking Harinam or Brahman, Gopal, Mantra, Kam Gayatri, Diksha? And everyone goes like this, yes. Then, Vaishnav deha prakrita kabunai. Are we a Vaishnava? Well, 
I'm Prakrita Vaishnava, or I'm Vaishnava Praya. Okay, I have the five, I've undergone the Pancha Samskaras. I've undergone the Pancha Samskaras to reform, to reform one's chitta. These are the Samskaras for the Antyajas. For one is not born in Varnashram Dharma to go through the Dasavita Samskaras for purification and taking his Brahman Diksha at the age of 11, then he can observe the Pancha Samskaras, which are all, all of his Janam Dosh and difficulties and anomalies of his low birth outside of, it's called Antyaja, Yavana, Lecha, whatever, outside the Varnashram Dharma, modern Kali Yuga birth, can all be nullified and cancelled by Guru Kripa and the undergoing of the Pancha Samskara ceremony which is one shot, whereas the Dasavita Samskaras, the ten Samskaras of the human being born in the Varnashram system. As, was anyone in this, any Western person can say they're born as a Shudra? There's no, there's no Varnashram Dharma. So we're all called Antyaja, or outside of the Varnashram system. But when one meets Guru, then one is meeting God. Sakshatari, Sakshatari te nasamasa shastraya. So he, Guru cancels all negativities and he makes one eligible for, he makes him into a Vaishnava. And a Vaishnava is more than a Brahmin born in the race in the Varnashram system and more than a Brahmin who's undergone all the, the Vidhi Nishedas and Yamas and Niyamas and all the Dasavita Samskaras everywhere. And the Srimad Bhagavatam, other Puranas says, a Vaishnava is more than a Brahmin and he undergoes the Pancha Samskara. He gets Nam, Krishna Das, uh, Radha Dasi, and he gets Urdhva Pandra, Tilak, and he gets Mantra, and he engages in Yajna, engages in Puja, Takri, Yajna, and then he gets the uh, Tapa. Tapa means austerity. Tapa means that he, he, wears, he, he shows the symbols and signs of a Vaishnava. He wears neck beads and and writes the name of Vishnu or Krishna Radha on his body. It's called Pancha Samskaras. So by doing that, then one is a human being. <laughs> one is not only a human being, but he's a Vaishnava. He's, he's, he enters the Achyuta Gotra by these Pancha Samskaras. I think you've heard it. We've all undergone these. Nam and Mantra and Tapa, Pun, Tapa Urva Pantra and Yagya. These are the Pancha Samskaras. Right? So you, we've all, so now we're humans. <laughs> Dui Parupashu. <laughs> and we're engaged in Krishna's service and we're aspiring to become pure Vaishnavas. So we're very fortunate. So yes, we fit the category that Lord Chaitanya is telling here, Sam Goswami. Prabhukahi. Vaishnav Deya Prakrita Kabunai. Vaishnav Deha Prakrita Kabunai. You're a Vaishnava? You have a Vaishnava Deha, a, a Shadir, the form of a Vaishnava or Vaishnavi, then you are not, there's no Prakriti about you. A Vaishnava, a, the body of a Vaishnava is not material. But, Sanat Goswami says, Mahabrabhu, this is material blood, this is material pus, and it materially smells. It's material vibat, it's materially vibatsa and disgusting abominable smell and it's contaminating you have to take a bath if you touch it it's infectious you can get disease and infected yourself by contacting this it's infectious disease these are all material considerations prakrita prakrita buddhi Lord Chaitanya said this is prakrita buddhi you're considering things you're not using, you're not looking through the eyes of Siddhanta guru, ch- guru ch- chakshush shastra chakshush what are the two eyes of the shishya? Two eyes of the chela. Guru chakshush. The guru is vichar, the guru is vigyan, the guru is realization, upadesh, instructions. And guru agya. That's one eye of the shishya. And the other eye is shastra chakshush. Shastra vidhi, nisheda. Shastra vidim utsri. Krishna says, shastra vidim utsrija. In 16th chapter of Gita, the modern people, they throw away and reject the Shastra. And what do they get? Nasa Siddhama Vatnoti and no Param Gatim. They don't get perfection or happiness or go to the spiritual world. So we follow Shastra. Shastra, we have two eyes, right? Right and left. 
So one eye should be, we should, we should see the world through the eye of Shastra and through the eye of Guru. The Guru's bhav, the Guru's teachings, the Guru's instructions, the Guru's corrections and chastisements. Not by prakriti buddhi. Or Chaitanya says, Sanatan? What is this prakriti buddhi? You're, you have Vaishnav Deya. Your body is a prakriti. Or Chaitanya says, the body of a Vaishnava is never material. It is considered transcendental, full of spiritual bliss. And our Gurudev, Srila Prabhupada, gives a commentary on Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's statement here. Because a devotee always engages in, in the service of Bhagavan Sri Krishna, his body is transcendental and full of spiritual bliss. One should never Never is an absolute word. Never means not today, tomorrow, at any moment. Even when you're, oh, when you're sick, you can consider. When you have a headache, you can consider. When you're diseased, you can have a consider. Who could be in a worse state of skin disease than Sanatan Goswami at this juncture of the Leela? But still, even, it's not that, yeah, I, yeah, when I'm happy and healthy, yes, my body's transcendental. I have a prakriti deha. But if I get cancer, oh, I have cancer. I'm dying of cancer. Now my body is not spiritual. Now it's material. No. Never means never. In health, in disease, and if you're alive, if you're, if you're young or if you're old, you're beautiful, you're ugly, you have no teeth, you're whatever. Your body, once you've under, undergone the pancha sanskaras for rectification, as bell metal is turned to gold by an alchemical process, and you become a Vaishnava, then there's no more materiality. This is the words of Srila Prabhupada, and echoing and repeating the words of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, which is Shastra. We have Bhagavad Gita, we have Gauranga Gita, the Gita, the teachings of Lord Chaitanya. Prabhupada says, one should never at any time consider that his Vaishnava Deya that his body is material, just as, just as one should never consider the Archamorti, one should never consider the deity, the Archamorti, the Takraji, to be material, to be made of stone or wood or marble or ashtadhatu or brass. Factually, the deity is directly the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Prabhupada said. So similarly, factually, the body of the Vaishnava is a murti of seva, a transcendental murti of seva, a seva murti, a divya murti, a prakrita. This is, an, a, this is, I'm not a Russian or American or man or woman or French or German or Russian. No, we're all serving units, units of service. Units of loving service. We all have a prakrita deus. He goes on. Lord Chaitanya, that's why I said this is very important teachings about Jiva Tattva and Bhakta Tattva, Vaishnava Tattva and Bhagavat Tattva. Very important. We hear them and someday we may realize them. Ante Leela chapter 4, verse, verses uh, 160 through 200 or so. The verse 192, Mahaprabhu says, Diksha Kale, Diksha Kale Bhakta Kare Atma Samarpan, Se Kale Krishna Tare Krishna Atma Sama. Very, very important verse. Chaitanya Charitamrita Anti Lila, chapter 4, verse 192. Sri Chaitanya Mahap, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, When one takes Vaishnav Diksha, and he atma samarpan man tan dan guru samarpan man tan dan krishna samarpan arpan arpan means offering giving dedicating sama means completely everything atma atma is everything atma 
becomes mind, becomes intelligence, becomes body. Everything is the Atma. That's our very being, Jivatma. Atma Samarpan. We should do Man Tan Dan. Man means mind. Tan means body. Dan means wealth, talent, abilities. Whatever we have in our hand, we should offer it to worship. Offer it. Offer it to Krishna for his pleasure and to Guru for his seva. So Lord Chaitanya says, when we're initiated, Diksha Kali, at the time, and if we and when we fully surrender, Atma Samarpan, then we fully surrender to the service of Krishna. Krishna accepts that devotee as good as himself. We do Atma Samarpan. From our side, we do Atma Samarpan. And from Krishna's side, he says, Kare Atma Sama. You are equal to me. I am, I am Satchitanand, and you are Satchitanand. When you're engaged in service and you're a Prakriti Deya, you are on the path of eternal, blissful, conscious life. You're living the eternal, conscious life, full of bliss, in your Prakriti Deya, right here and right now. And when we give up this mortal coil at the time of death, we will get our eternal Prakriti Deya that we've been serving, we're, our, basically our eternal Siddha Deya is serving through this material body. Then we give up the material body, then that same Prakriti Siddha Deya spiritual body continues in the Prakriti Dham to serve Radha and Krishna, hearing and chanting and singing and making flower garlands and cooking and making out, sewing outfits and brushing hair and everything we're doing in our Prakriti Deya as, as sadhakas we'll do in our Siddha Deya. Lord Chaitanya goes on. Fantastic teachings of Lord Chaitanya. Se Deya Kare Tara Chiranandamoy Chiranandamoy A Prakriti Deya Tanra Charana Bhajai At the time of Diksha the devotee surrenders. Then the devotee's body is transformed into spiritual existence, Chidananda Moya. Chida, Chidananda Moya. This body, as Prabhupada often said, is Achit, Asat Achit, and Niranand. It's a famous phrase. Prabhupada says, What is this body? It's Asat, it's temporary, it's Achit, it's full of ignorance. And it's niranan. There is no bliss in this material body. But when you get your aprakrita deha, aprakrita deha means your serving body, your body which you serve Krishna, aprakrita deha. When you get that body, then it's chitananda moy. It's, it's not asat, it's sat, eternal. It's not achit, full of ignorance and lack of conscious conscious. Awareness, it's full of unlimited awareness, consciousness, pure consciousness. And Niranand is full of bliss, a body of bliss. When the body, the devotee's body is transformed into spiritual existence, in that Aprakrita Deya, he renders service to the lotus feet of Krishna. So we're serving Krishna. Krishna is transcendental, totally spiritual. He cannot be touched or served by anyone material. You've heard of Ramayana and Rakshash, Ravan? He came to kidnap Sita, who is protected by the Lakshman Rekha of Lakshman, ring of fire. And so Ravana disguised himself as a Vairagi, and he came there begging some fall, some fruits. So when Sita was fooled by that disguise of Ravana. She, she reached her hands across to give some fruit to that wandering mendicant in the forest, who actually would be considered to be a Titi Narayan, a, coming at any time, unannounced. So at that time, Ravana grabbed her and kidnapped her. But the Korma Purana, the Korma Purana, which Lord Chaitanya found in other places, is said that he did not touch Sita because he's a materialistic person. He has a prakrita, de he has a, a prakrita deha, 
a material body made of karma. So material cannot touch spiritual. Material can't see spiritual. So when he, Ravana, grabbed Sita, Agni Dev immediately produced a Maya Sita, a replica, a material, like a carbon copy, a Xerox copy. So that that Sita was not the consort or the spiritual energy of Lord Ram, and the original Sita went in Agni Loka for some one year, and then returned to. Ram. So the point is that we cannot serve Krishna in a material body. We cannot touch Krishna with a material body. When we're bathing the deities or massaging or dressing the deities, how are we doing it? Because he's transcendental. The Murti is Chidananda Moy. The Murti is Satchidananda, Sakshat Krishna. So the Guru who is engaging us in the service of Krishna in the Murti He's given us a prakritadeya, diksha kale a prakritadeya. Diksha is a transforming phenomenon, turning matter into spirit. So now, text 195. So, Sanat Goswami is hearing. Oh, forgot to <laughs> turn on the button. Sanan Goswami, that is, it's worthless, you're recording them. Sanan Goswami is hearing these wonderful teachings of Lord Chaitanya. And he's thinking about them and considering them deeply, as we all are. Now, speaking that philosophy and tattva, which is true for everyone. It's true for Sanatana Goswami who is taking diction as a Vaishnava Deya. It's true for everyone in the audience that's hearing this. If you're taking Vaishnava Diksha, you have an aprakrita, spiritual transcendental body, and you're surrendered, Atma Samarpan, and Krishna considers you equal to himself, Krishna Atma, Atma Krishna Kari Atma Sama. But now Sanatana is thinking, but, what a, but still, I, I have some doubts. Now Lord Chaitanya directs himself. He's speaking Tattva Siddhanta for the benefit of Sanatana Goswami and everyone is reading the Chaitanya Charitamrita for the last 500 years and for the next 500 years and on and on. We'll hear the immortal teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu on Guru Tattva and Jiva Tattva and Bhakta Tattva and this Diksha phenomenon. Now he addresses Sanatan. Listen. Sanatanera dehe Krishna kandu upa jana ama parikshite ihan dila patana. Sanatan, why did this happen? How, how did you get this disease? If you have a spiritual body, that's what you're thinking? I, I'm serving Krishna. How did I get cancer? I have a spiritual body. This is a deathly material disease. I'm going to die. If I could stay on and live and serve, but I'm dying. How is it? How do I have this disease? What's the answer? Same thing, Krishna says. Krishna, somehow or other, manifested these itching sores on the body of Sanatana Goswami and sent, this is actually the thinking of Lord Chaitanya, and sent him here to test me. Lord Chaitanya is saying that. That's an interesting point. So you can take this at any, on many different levels. Oh, this devotee, this great devotee of the Lord, was fully engaged in the service of the Lord, doing wonderful service helping hundreds and thousands of devotees, lectures, preaching, writing, everything, kirtan, so many wonderful sevas. And then cancer, and one year later, gone to Krishna. How does it happen? Krishna? Krishna kandu upajana. Upajana means manifested. Krishna manifested these sores in the pure body of Sanatana Goswami. Do you think, think Sanatana Goswami has karma? 
He's suffering from his karma? No. Oh, because he's not in Goswami, he has no karma, but I have karma. No, that's not what Lord Chaitanya is saying. He's making a point of siddhanta for every Vaishnava and Vaishnavi. You're taking diksha. You sanatan and you, all you sanatans, because every jiva is sanatan. Sanatan means eternal. Mamayavamsho, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Mamayavamsho, jiva loke, jiva bhuta, sanatana. Manakshastrani indrani, prakriti stani karshati, prakriti stani karshati. That sanatan is standing, kar, struggling karshati while standing in this material prakrita. So there's some, even in that verse, it's sanatan and prakriti. Jiva Bhuta is sanatan. It's sanatan. The living entities, the Jiva Bhuta's living entities are sanatan. And they're, they're meant to be in sanatan dham. And they're engaged in sanatan dharma. The religious process is to, li- to gain eternity, to live in the eternal spiritual world. Sanatan dharma. Mamevam, this is Gita. Mamevam sho jiva loke jiva bhuta sanatana. Manak shastrani indriani prakriti prakriti stani karshati. Prakriti stan. We're stuck in this karma chakra, samsara chakra in the material world. Karshati, we're struggling for existence. Birth, old age, disease, and death. Janma mrityu jiravyadi dukkha doshano darshanam. So Mahabharata was thinking, Krishna has done this. So in this case of this great devotee, I was giving the example of just any devotee. I'm not thinking of anyone, but just say, and that this particular scenario is everywhere, Nimbarkis and everywhere, Vaishnavas. Krishna's will. But in this case, he's saying, Krishna manifested all these sores to to test me. So what's Lord Chaitanya is telling? That if I that Krishna's testing if Krishna is testing Lord Chaitanya, is Krishna testing us when we get the disease or we see some other great devotee get a disease? Is Krishna testing our realization of Siddhanta? Is Krishna testing our understanding of the tattva and the philosophy of Krishna consciousness? Oh, how he got cancer? Is that, did he do some aparad? Did he do some sin? Is this some karmic reaction? Is this his bad karma? Is this his destiny? Let me do his chart. Krishna is testing us. That's what Lord Chaitanya is saying. He's speaking all this and revealing his mind for us. So now Lord Chaitanya is saying, oh, Krishna is trying to test me. So if we see any, any devotee has any apparent difficulty or disease, it's Krishna's will. So then we should accept that and not challenge that or doubt that or, oh, he has a disease, he must be a bad devotee. Good devotees don't get sick. Good devotees don't get cancer. Good devotees don't die when they're 40 or 25. Good devotees live a ripe old age. Oh, this is, this is absurd. So now Lord Chaitanya is showing us through his own example, but as I said, oftentimes Lord Chaitanya is teaching as the ideal teacher. Then we can do, then from Lord Chaitanya's teachings and example and behavior, we can do Anu Sharan. We can follow in his footsteps and follow his examples. But at other times, when Lord Chaitanya is relishing his Ras, as Rasaraj Mahabhav, Rasaraj Sri Krishna Mahabhav Surupini, in other parts, in the same book, Lord Chait- in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Lord Chaitanya is in his own uh, Antar Chit, because he's in three states of consciousness. In Chaitanya Charitamrita, Lord Chaitanya is in three states of consciousness. Baya Chit, Arda Baya Chit, and Antar Chit. So external consciousness, half external internal consciousness, and sometimes internal consciousness. So when he's in ex- fully external consciousness, he's teaching, he's preaching, he's engaged in Harinam, he's walking behind Tulsi, he's offering obeisance to Tulsi, he's chanting on his fingers and keeping, and he's counting with a, a, a Kati Sutra Dara. Kati Sutra Dara. He's counting his chanting on his fingers with a knotted string tied around his waist. This is described in Chaitanya Astakam by Sri Rupa Goswami Pad. Kati uh, Shatra, you know, Sutra, Kati Sutra Dara. 
uh, holding a string around his waist. Dara means holding, sutra means string, kati means a waistband. So he had little knots there he would count. So these are the, the examples that he was doing. So we should chant our japa in front of Tulsi as Lord Chaitanya did. We should walk behind. Lord Chaitanya would walk on Kirtan in Puri. And he, would in, he would ask, oh, where's the Tulsi? He would insist that someone would carry Tulsi on their head in front of him as and he walked behind. This is in Chaitanya Bhagavat by Vrindavan Das Thakur. So these are the examples, behaviors, and teachings that are for us, the Gaur Bhaktas. But when he's in Gambhir Lila, and when he's relishing Radha Bhav and, and relishing Krishna Karnamrita and Gita Govinda, oh Lord Chaitanya relish Gita Govinda, so can I. This is called Anokaran. This is imitation of Lord Chaitanya. So we have to be careful not to, to follow but not imitate. So any Shastras we require a Guru. When when is Lord Chaitanya teaching us and when can we follow him? And what to, well, Lord Chaitanya, he's, he's the ideal devotee, and he's teaching them to, to serve the Vaishnavas Prasadam. These are all good things. But when he's, when he's chanting, gopi, 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 so I'm supposed to run through the, I'm in college, I should run down the hallway in the college, gopi, gopi, gopi. Should I do that? Because some young devotees are still in college or getting their degrees or whatever. I should go into my medical school and, and, and stand up, gopi, gopi, gopi. Lord Chaitanya said that. That's called anokaran, that's false imitation. It's a very important principle. Because oftentimes people mistakenly quote Lord Chaitanya and, oh, I'm following Lord Chaitanya. <laughs> Unless you're following your guru, you're not following anyone. <laughs> if you're following your guru, you're safe. If you're not following your guru, you're following a demon called your mind. You have two choices, follow guru and go to God. Follow your mind and go to dog. <laughs> so this is the, uh, at this juncture, there's a whole chapter 22, 24, Sanatan Shiksha, Rupa Shiksha. Well, Lord Chaitanya is in, in Bahir Chit. He's an external consciousness and he's teaching like a great philosopher and teacher of Gaudiya Vaishnava Siddhanta to Rupa Goswami and Sanatan Goswami in so many places he's giving Shiksha. So that's valuable for all of us, and we should learn it and follow it and imbibe it and spread it and share it. But when he's in his internal ecstasies in Gambira and dancing in Rathiatra, and you know, we don't imitate that. We don't. It's uh, an offense. You understand. You've heard these terms, Anokaran, Anosharan, following and imitation. So now Lord Chaitanya is thinking on this subject. Now how, he's, he reveals his mind more. Grina kari alingana nakari tama jabe Krishna tani aparada danda pait tama tabe. If I hated Sanatana Goswami and had not embraced him, I would certainly have been chastised for offenses to Krishna. Very interesting point. Lord Chaitanya, he's revealing his thinking. He was speaking to Sanatana Goswami about Diksha Kale, Prakrita Deya, its quotations, and it's Lord Chaitanya. And he's speaking to all of us to follow this and understanding that. And then this is, he's thinking to himself. And his thinking is also shiksha for us. Like we have a friend, oh, nice to see you, embrace you. And, and your friend is healthy and you come to see him, you embrace him. Now if your friend comes to see you, and, uh, and he has all sorts, and say it's a hot summer day, and, and uh, you know, he comes, you know, or say he lives, it's some brahmacharis and sannyasis living in an ashram, okay? Sannyasis and brahmacharis living together in as, ash, ashram, and there's no ladies there, and it's just a wealth in ashram. So then it's a very hot place in India. So on that day, the, the uh, brahmacharis wearing gumsha, and then he's doing seva, he's been cleaning, and, and he comes to see the guru. And, then the, and generally the guru has a very affectionate relationship with him, so he pays obeisances, maybe the guru embraces him, or maybe it's a god-brother comes, god-brother comes, or god-brother lives in the ashram, they're both in gumshu, whatever. And then he embraces him. And then a couple of days later, the god-brother gets up, his body's covered with pus and blood, and he goes, oh, uh, 
Krishna Das. <laughs> will, we, will we hesitate? Will we doubt to embrace him? Well, you're, when you're healthy and look good, I'll embrace you. I'll, I'll, but if you look bad, or you're... So that's what he's saying. If I had hated, if I hated Snatan and did not embrace him because I would get all bloody and smelly and full of pus and blood, I would have made an offense. I would have been, ch I would have been chastised for making offenses to Krishna. Because the body of a devotee, if you offend the body of a devotee, it's like offending the body of Krishna. Clear what he's saying. Antilila chapter 4, verse 196. It's so clear, Prabhupada doesn't give any purports. Bhakti Minot Thakur didn't give any purports. Bhakti Sanatha Saraswati didn't give any purports. It's clear. If we make some dual, if we have dualistic vision, in other words, what we're talking about here is absolute vision and dualistic vision. Dualistic vision means friends and enemies, likes and dislikes, heat and cold, good and bad. And absolute means he's transcendental. He's a devotee, a prakrita deha. Krishna's devotee. Now we go to text 199. Now he is speaking, Lord Chaitanya. Prabhupada, now he was thinking like that? That he, that he himself, if he, if he, if, if he had Sanan Goswami's feel, it's very, it's very funny paradox here. Sanan Goswami wants to leave Jagannath Puri because he's afraid that every time he meets Lord Chaitanya that he's making offenses because Lord Chaitanya insists on embracing him. And, cover, and then Lord Chaitanya's body gets covered with blood and pus. So he's, uh, he doesn't want to make that offense to the Lord. Because the Lord is his worshipable personality. And you shouldn't pour blood and pus on the Lord. Can you go to your deity? You think it's an offense if you have a deity and you pour liquid blood and pus on a deity? It's a terrible offense. So Lord Chaitanya is Sakshat Morti, Sakshat Bhagavan. He's no different than the Morti. It's a very graphic point but try to drive it home. And Sanat, he, and Sanat is, don't, don't embrace me. You are my Morty. You are my Ishta, you are my Ishta Dev. Lord Chaitanya is his Ishta Dev. Ishta Dev means my worshipable De Deva, my worshipable God, Ishta. And as it's so unimaginable and detestable to think of such a thing as one devotee registered with their body language. And... Uh, but try to understand the severity and the depth of this, this rasa-filled, tattva-filled exchange between Sanat and Goswami and Lord Chaitanya. That's why the title of this story is From a Golden, Bo a golden Body Arising from Sores. This is the title of the story. A Golden Body Arises from Sores. So Sanat and Goswami, he's afraid that I'm making an offense to my worshipful Lord. But we just heard Lord Chaitanya revealing his mind, saying, I feel that I'm making offense if I don't embrace him. Sanatana Goswami is feeling, if Lord Chaitanya embraces me, I'm offending the Lord. And the Lord is thinking, if I don't embrace my devotee, I'm offending the devotee and I'm offending Krishna. Sanatana thinks he's offending Krishna and Lord Chaitanya thinks he's offending Krishna. And he is Krishna. Just see the mentality. Because Lord Chaitanya is seeing, he's seeing this devotee is like Krishna. He's Chidananda Moy. He's a he has a spiritual body. And Sanat Goswami is looking at Lord Chaitanya and said, you have, you have a Prakrita Deya. You are Chidananda Moy. You are, have a spiritual body. You have a spiritual body. I don't want to offend you. And Lord Chaitanya is looking at the devotee. You have a spiritual body. I don't want to offend you. Do you see it? This is incredible such profound teaching to drive the point home, to somehow get it through our thick skulls. Devotees are transcendental. So now, Lord Chaitanya says in verse 199, Prabhukai, Prabhukai sanatana na mani, maniha dukkha tomara lingane ami pai bara sukha What's the time? Five. Okay, there's a, a few verses. 
My dear Sanatan, do not be aggrieved, do not be unhappy. For when I embrace you, I get the greatest pleasure. So this is not a dualistic vision. Oh, if when you when you look good and I, I embrace you, I feel good. But if you're covered with blood and pus and don't look good, I, I, I don't want to embrace you and I won't feel good. Devotee is always good, always transcendental. And then he says, because Sanatana Goswami says that Jagannanda advised me, we heard that story yesterday, Jagannanda's bad advice. And he, uh, Jagannanda said, we want to avoid offending Lord Chaitanya, then you should move to Vrindavan and stay there, and then you won't make offense. So that was, if he had followed Jagannanda's advice, then Sanatana Goswami would have left him right after Rathiyatra, which was right around the corner, it was already July. He would have left Puri. What, what did Lord Chaitanya say to counteract and supersede the instruction given by Jagananda? And this is why Lord Chaitanya said, Jagananda is a naughty boy. Jaga, J- he said, Jaga is just a young, naughty boy. He doesn't know so much. He's very impudent. And he's, he, should, he should be chastised for for telling a senior, learned person like you, Sanatan, giving you instruction. He has no right or adhikar to instruct you. He's, he's one-third of your age. He's 20, 30, and you're like 60. And he's telling you to leave. So what am I saying? I'm superseding and turning over his instruction. I'm saying, Evatsara tumi ihan raha amasane vatsara rahi tamari Ami Pattaimo Brindavane. Lord Chaitanya doesn't tell Sanatana, he doesn't say, go to Brindavan, leave, you should, yes, you should leave Puri immediately. He says, stay with me, stay right here in Jagannath Puri with me for one year. And after that, I shall send you to Brindavan. Eta Bali Puna Tanre, Kaila Alingana. Kandu Gela Angahaila Suvarnera Sama. <laughs> then they were talking, the whole subject matter is this sore covered body and embracing. And Lord Chaitanya said, Your body is transcendental. I get great pleasure by embracing it. There's no problem. And then after saying what he said to stay there, then he said, Mahaprabhu again embraced Lord uh, Snatan. And with that embrace, with that prema lingana, that loving embrace that Goranga gave to Sanatan, what happened to Sanatan? All of his sores and blood and pus on his body immediately disappeared, and his entire body turned into gold, suvarna. So this is the, the story. This is the last. Verse Dek, Deki Hari Dasa Mane Haila Chamatkar Prabhure Kahena E Bangi J Tamar. So the title of the story is A Golden Body Arising from Sores. A Golden Body Arising from Sores. When Haridas Thakur was one of the three people, three devotees there, Sanatan Haridas and Lord Chaitanya. When he saw this phenomenon, this miracle right before his eyes, he was chamatkar, completely astonished. And he put his hand on his head and he looked at Lord Gauranga and he said, this is just your transcendental pastimes, Lord Gauranga. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Ki Jai 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 Sri Radhe Shah. Shri Chaitanya Charitamrita Ki Jai.